Hello guys, welcome back to part two of our kitchen makeover, kind of our mini kitchen makeover. We started this series really strong and then by the end of part one, you saw me kind of fall apart because I made a bad design decision on a detail for the kitchen. I don't like it. I don't like them, I don't like them, I don't like them. I don't, I don't like that at all. They're not doing it, oh! That is not the vibe. We, I gotta, I gotta regroup. I went into this project trying to reuse as much as possible. We were obviously reusing all of the cabinets. We were just updating the paint color. And I also wanted to attempt to reuse the handles. Although I didn't like the shape already, I wanted to try. So I decided after painting the cabinets, this like dark opera sheen, deep black purple, that the black of the handle and like the deep bronze that the handles were, you weren't gonna be able to see them, which I kinda liked because I didn't like the style. So I was like, well, you can't see them, it's fine. But overall for the design, it didn't work. I went through all of the possibilities of what I could paint them and spray paint these handles and settled on something that wasn't natural for me to settle on. I don't normally gravitate towards anything that's chrome, silver, stainless steel. Those aren't my go-tos personally, but for all of the stainless steel appliances and the sink faucet that we already had in here, it was kind of, I felt like my only option at the time. I did it, I painted them, I fell apart, I hated them. I didn't, I don't, uh -uh, no. It was a hard no. I stepped back from it and came back in and I was like, I don't like that. I, I don't like it. One, I didn't like the color and two, I still didn't like the style. So I went on a hunt for new hardware. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow on golden. What I thought was going to be a shot in the dark trying to find vintage hardware in the right style and in the quantity that I actually needed for the space ended up being a really successful trip. I actually found four different options in antique brass from this hardware store that we could actually use. So she let me take them from the store and try them in the space. So out of the four, two I loved. I loved the tone, obviously the antique brass. I loved the scale of them and also just the overall design. So I felt like they were gonna really work in the kitchen and pair nicely with the cabinet color and tie in the stainless steel. It, it worked, antique brass works. But the major difference between these two was one was a reproduction so it wasn't vintage it wasn't old it was pretty but it kind of had this half look on the back of it that I didn't love the other one was vintage but it needed a lot of work a lot of them were pretty like like caked on kind of grease maybe they were in a kitchen but you know I love a good project and she gave me the entire set that she had all 34 of them for 60 bucks because she was like, you're gonna have to do some work on these. $60 to update a design decision that I didn't love is a steal. So a lot of them, a lot of them need a lot of work. I mean, they just look like they've been through some things. Some of them are already pretty clean. Maybe they were in an area of the kitchen that wasn't like by the stove, but they just need some cleaning. But they were the, they were the perfect tone. So we're gonna try a like hot water vinegar mix that she actually recommended that they do often. Taking inspiration from the main room that we did and really wanting to tie spaces together, a great way I do that is by paint. You know, using the same paint color in some way, whether it's on the wall in one room and the you know accent, maybe painting the cabinets that color or something. So I wanted to tie in those two spaces. So I, my gut was telling me to paint the walls in here at the same color as the walls in there, which is Sculptor Clay by Bear. I tested it. If you can see these swatches right here, it's not just one step up from white. It's like two, two and a half steps up. It's such a beautiful color. It's such a complimenting color. And if over time we find that it's a little too dark, we'll change it. So let's paint. <laughs> This morning with the 
sunrise in my eyes Just like a new day Breath of fresh air in my eyes I don't know how, don't know why But I'll, I'll be toasting all my life bottom of the bucket we're just gonna pour hot water and vinegar on them and just let them soak for a little while I'll test them in maybe a few hours but said so there really wasn't like the way that they do it there really wasn't like a specific time just as long as it means depending on like how cake they are and how much stuff is like all on them soak for a day in water and vinegar and you can tell it's still pretty grimy but everything on top like all the grease and things um, is really loose so I'm just using some Dawn soap kind of like squeezing it on there rubbing it in and using a toothbrush because it's a little more gentle than like the wire brushes that I have Kind of getting into the different areas you can tell you can see it's all coming off really well and then we'll rinse it so you can tell look how much better it looks so you can kind of see the difference <laughs> we've come a long way that's crazy it's just getting all of that off. Good morning, guys. We finished painting and I could not love this color more. I loved it when we did it in the living room. So I don't know why I even second guessed that I would love it in here, but it calms the space so much. I felt like the bright white against the darker cabinetry was giving too much of a contrast that I like contrast, but I like it to be a little more subtle. If you could even be in this room and feel how it feels, it feels so calm and so soothing and so good and very like rich, like got a lot of depth to it and moody and which, which you know, you, which you know, I love. I also spent all last night working on the hardware. I had to scrub each one individually after we soaked it in the water and vinegar mixture. They came out perfect. I mean, they're definitely vintage. They're definitely all individually unique, but I think they're so pretty. So we are ready to install them. I did have to go to the hardware store to pick up some machine screws. I opted to get the gold color, the brass, because I felt like it was not Again, I don't like silver. I don't know what, that's not new news. I don't know why I thought I was gonna <laughs> like that hardware. I got one inch screws for the cabinet doors and then one and a quarter for the drawers because you always wanna go a quarter inch over the thickness. Stripes, 
introducing that like vintage feel that I love um, but they're not in your face like a bright polished brass let's talk about something that I feel like this kitchen's always been missing and that's texture on the windows we don't need curtains in our home for privacy because our property is really private I wanted to bring some curtains in that would just offer some texture some visual change on the windows and just style up the windows a little bit although our windows are absolutely beautiful so what I'm thinking is similar to what we did in the guest bathroom at the cottage and do like cafe curtains in the kitchen. There's no sunlight that comes in from this side of the house. So I'm just thinking about doing like half curtains, cafe curtains, like halfway. And I'm also thinking it might be really pretty on the window over the sink because it would add that texture, but we would probably leave these open. There are some beautiful brass or bronze cafe curtains that you can buy online, and I'll leave some of my favorites linked, but overall I felt like they were pretty pricey. Uh, you can do them two different ways. You can have outside mount like ours are going to be where we don't have any wall that comes on the side that we can attach them to, so we need them to actually go flat against the window. Or you could do an inside mount if you do have kind of it boxed in. I was like, could I do this for cheaper? Could I get the parts instead of buying the whole thing and customizing the size and then getting them in, you know, like maybe in a few weeks when they're made, could I just kind of do it myself? I found the parts on Amazon. I will link everything. I had the outside mounting brackets, which were really, really pretty. I like them. So we'll screw them in there and then the pole will come out of the hole on that side, but I like the little ridges that it had on it. They come in a set of two, so we needed one for each window, so I needed three. And then for the pole, brass 3 8 inch, because these are 3 8 brackets, I ordered these in 3 8 inch tubes, brass tubes. Then we needed something to attach the curtains to the rod. This is specifically called a clip-on cafe ring, and they, I thought they were so pretty. They had a little more texture, you see how they had the line in the center? And you squeeze it and it pinches the fabric like that. And they were a little wider than most rings that I see. And I just thought that was so pretty. They come with the screws already. Super easy process. I actually want the cafe curtain rod to be in the center of this piece here. So it's just, there's like, it's thoughtful like that. I don't want it like here halfway or up above the opening. Now these also, why I'm doing this, these windows are painted shut. <laughs> so don't be deceived by this hook because they're painted shut. I do want to fix that one day. I'm still not quite over doing the windows from the cottage. So we'll, we'll wait a while on that project. That right in the center. And these will actually screw off so that you can get the pole in. I thought that was clever. I was like, how does that work? Do you have to put the pole first and then screw them? But they just come off. So you can see the pole is a little bit too long. It comes all the way out here. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm just gonna mark where I need to cut on it. And they sell little pipe cutters. They're called tubing cutters. Right inside here. And we're gonna tighten it. We're either gonna turn the pipe or the tool, doesn't really matter, I don't think. And we'll tighten it again, another round of turning until it goes all the way through. And oh, see, super easy. I don't really know how many rings I'm gonna want. 
I know I like an odd number on each panel. That I do know. And each pack comes with 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all 10 on here because I could do like five each, five each panel. And then we will put it on here. So cute. Okay, that was the easy part, surprisingly. The hard part was figuring out what kind of fabric I wanted to do for the curtains. I went back and forth. Here are my inspiration pictures. I wanted something really light, really sheer, really gauzy, and hopefully with some kind of subtle pattern. I was thinking like a, a pinstripe, like a stripe would be really nice. It would look kind of like more French. I went on the hunt to find the fabric uh, just so that I could make them myself so that they would be cheaper. First I went to Joanne's just to see if I could find fabric. I couldn't find anything but this gauzy white. Just simple, gauzy white. And this was in the fashion fabrics. It didn't have a pattern. And in person, it has a very uh, light yellow undertone. So like for fun, let's just put it up here and see what it would look like. Okay, just for fun. That's the gauzy white. Then I was like, maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. Maybe I, I do want a pattern. And so I was like, let me just throw this up there for fun. I only have one of these. I got this in Texas. What a pattern would look like. So that's a pattern. Other things that come in fabric form. Tea towels like that one. I was like, I can get like a tea towel. It's just a piece of fabric. There's nothing to it. It doesn't have to be used as a tea towel. Placemats or runners or throw blankets. I was thinking of everything. Uh, so I went to Home Goods to see. I'm like, okay, they usually have some things. There wasn't any stripes at Home Goods. There was this placemat, which was very pretty and floral. Um, there was a set of four placemats for $14.99. And then I got it here, and it's not long enough. I thought for sure they would be. They're not. They're too short. So I was out. I was like, okay. They didn't have any other patterns that I liked. So I resorted to, I looked at the curtains uh, and then the tablecloths and they did have this tablecloth that's just a linen. It has a little slubbiness to it. It's got a little bit of, um, you know, variation in the color. It's not a pattern, but at least it's not solid. That is all I can find. I'm not kidding you. I looked for a few trips, a few days. I could not find anything. We are going to make some curtains out of this linen and we're gonna go we're gonna go with it and it looks really good with the wall color because that that little light color that's in the linen really like ties that together but would i like a pattern yes i would and we could have fun with it i feel like so i measured what i needed because i always want them to be like perfectly measured like i want it to sweep the windowsill so i need 23 and a half inches long and then we're gonna do each piece the width of the window uh, so that's that way when it's scrunched it's like double it's double so it has like a nice little like curve to it so we're gonna do all of the curtains for the kitchen for a $16.99 look just the curtain itself so that's way cheaper than I could have bought them for I don't know where my fabric shears went but this these scissors are cutting fine always like to press the seams that I'm about to sew because it just gives me a better finish in the end. Like I don't have to guess at where I'm supposed to be sewing or how much the hems are going to be. You can just do it all beforehand and it really, really helps. So I highly recommend. So on the hem, we're gonna go up a quarter inch and press that down and then we're gonna go up again for the remainder of our hem, whatever I added, like a two, so two and a quarter. And we're just gonna sew the seams. Super simple. You could also opt to not actually sew these. Uh, you could just use the hemming tape where you just iron it. I could have done that because I was ironing already. Great option if you don't have a sewing machine. I'm impatient. I want to see what it looks like. So, let's see. 
They're kind of hard to squeeze. Okay, we'll do the first and the last one first, and then we can evenly distribute the rest. Oh, perfect length. That is so cute. definitely make some I even need like a little bit shorter ones for over the sink because that's more than enough okay I can make some more of those but let's decorate I'm I'm feeling like I need I'm feeling like I need to decorate we'll start with the obvious I am definitely moving our runner vintage runner back in here I love this runner I got it at the same time I got the rug for the living room from the Rose Bowl flea market it's a, I believe this one's Persian. Both of them are Persian. They're vintage, they're worn, they're beautiful. So we've had this one since right after we moved in. I love it. I love the green and I love the pattern. So with this now too, it kind of makes sense that we kept the curtains on the more simple side because this does have a lot of pattern and I felt like that's what the kitchen was missing, but I didn't have the rug in here. So that actually, works out really well. Something that inspired this entire makeover. I've loved this color for a while, but once I found this piece of art, it took me over the edge. Like I was like, yes, I'm doing that color. I have to put this art in the kitchen. This is a beautiful painting that I got in Texas, but it's actually from France. It's absolutely stunning. Um, it's very old. It's very crackled. It's just everything I wanted in a piece of art for in here to give that like old world, like, like, antique French feeling. This is a perfect place for art, obviously, but this art is actually very like horizontal, but I think it's, maybe we do two. I have a smaller piece that may be complimenting. It's this piece. It's much smaller. I actually stole it from the dining room, but it kind of has, it kind of has the same vibe. So one could go a little lower, this one in the center, and then the other here. What does that look like? I wish you guys were here to hold this up for me so I could see. Or vice versa? I think that might be top heavy. I love that it hangs off the wall like that. It kind of hangs forward because where the string comes down, it's like I don't want to change it because that's how it was hung somewhere else a long time ago, you know? Just go with it and see. Uh, it's a little smaller scale, this one, than what I had here before. So I think I was used to seeing that, but I'm actually very into that. The only other thing that I thought, like, there's not enough space here to do any kind of furniture. That's why I had that bench here, because I felt like it added something and grounded this area. The other thing that I thought maybe we could do here was have, like, a little skinny, I'm talking skinny, skinny little cabinet, a little coffee bar or something, maybe clear up some space. That could be like something we look for, uh, but it would have to be no more than 12, 14 inches deep. Bring the bench back in here because I do really like it. I need to put the cover on the plug as well. So over on this wall, I had all of my cutting boards, like more, more decorative ones and bread boards because this is the walkway. And <laughs> one of the reasons, not one, the major major reason we really want to renovate this kitchen is that the refrigerator opens and it hits the wall <laughs> so that's that's a problem the cutting boards look really good i feel like i need more i do have one more to add but i feel like especially when we go to france and we're looking around that is something that we're going to pick up so that i can kind of have like it completely filled i'm feeling like it needs to be like really full um, and really make like a really big statement. So I want to hang them back. I feel like that's it's a good good place for them. 
see if I just had more <laughs> like two maybe another one here and then a few more here I just I want to fill the whole wall I feel like that would look so cool we'd like to keep all of our kitchen essentials here pinch salt and pepper and olive oil and our utensils this is our largest prep area so we don't have a ton of counter space, um, especially when we start to put appliances, they kind of start to eat up the space because we actually, we don't have like an uh, appliance cabinet that we can put in, we don't have a pantry. So we really just make the most out of what we've got. Uh, so I actually did just get, if you follow me over my vlog channel, I replaced our large toaster oven with this one from our place. This is their wonder oven. It's so cute and it's neutral. And it could sit out because if you have a kitchen where you need appliances to sit out all the time so you don't because you don't have storage like they have to be <laughs> like something cute a way that i remedy cords like that is with cutting boards i have this big cutting board that we can use oh oh that's just me being really smart <laughs> the plug is in the handle that's now covers the cord, but makes it functional. I have like a little wooden little riser. I got this one from Olive Atelier. A lot of my cutting boards and that bench are from Olive Atelier. I have some really pretty vases too from them. I don't like to see the plugs. I kind of like to hide them uh, or cover them, but at least it'll still be functional like this. We have our cork that we set hot pans on. So those come in really handy. So those will help me hide the cork. I'll just go here. And I, and I bought myself a prize. <laughs> I wasn't feeling well a couple weeks ago and I did some online retail therapy. I have been looking for Kenzie Child's anything. And the enamel wear in pots, in bowls. I have a few that I've collected, but I've been looking at estate sales. I bought the teapot. I love this. I got the bigger version because I actually want it to stay out as decor. I don't want to put it away. I didn't have a teapot. The top has a little bird. How precious. This is the floral collection. This is a new one. I will leave it linked. She can sit out. She's just everything. Where does she want to go? Does she want to go in the middle? Ah! I felt like it would bring a really, like a beautiful statement in here too. Walking through walls, tell me that I you walking through doors, cause when I try to quit you, I
I hope you guys enjoyed this two-part series of making over our kitchen. I just wanted to warm it up and tie it into the front room and it came out even better than I could have imagined. I've never done a dark cabinet before, so this was totally an experiment and in a few years we will be renovating this entire space. But for the cost of, yes, I had to buy hardware. So for the cost of $60 for that, the hardware and curtains that we did and just a gallon of paint, we completely transformed this space on a serious budget. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload. I upload here every Sunday and two additional videos over on my other channel, which is my vlog channels where you get to see all the behind the scenes, me shopping for things, gearing up for projects, things that you didn't see here. So definitely head over to the vlog and subscribe there if you like that style of video. And I will see you guys very, very soon for another video. I think we're gonna do bookshelves in the living room, the informal living room next. I think, I think that's where I'm moving, but stay tuned.